be that if you have a question, coaching kind of question, that you might give a call? And, and if so, where did that relationship start? Uh, not this week, but normally, um, you, you know, again, Andy's uh, – the, the league's a better place uh, with Andy uh, and his family, a part of it. Um, you know, just um, getting to know him throughout uh, coaching, uh, going through this process. You know, leaned on him about preparing for interviews, um, different things that come up outside of uh, football, also with football. And he's been a great mentor, um, someone that I would uh, am very appreciative of um, to, to be able to reach out to him. In what ways does this scheme sort of stress a defense? Well, there's a lot of speed. I mean, I think it's, uh, there's, it's, there's a speed element to it horizontally. There's also, you know, the speed element vertically, you know, downfield. And so, you know, you have to cover, um, you know, a lot of the field. Um, they have a quarterback that, um, you know, is able to make decisions on, on whether to pull it and, and throw it or, or hand it off. Um, you know, so, again, they, they do a good job in, in each and every week of, of putting stress on the defense. Elsie, as far as matchups go, Putting stress on the defense is he is a tough a guy to match up. With well, he's long, he's athletic, uh, he's got, got good hands, good release, good play strength. So, um, yeah, I think he's re you know very savvy um, to be able to understand how he has to to get to a certain depth and, and understand how he has to run a certain route um, versus press or versus zone. Uh, I think you know the quarterback obviously um, trusts him, likes him. Been very productive uh, for a lot of years. What stands out to you about Tyron Matthew when you watch him? I think he loves football. I think he really enjoys. Um, I think he loves. I would imagine coming to work every day and learning and studying. Um, he plays with passion, energy. I think he's a very good tackler. I think he's an instinctive player. Uh, not having ever met him, you know, I would just those are the things that I see uh, from tape. Does it seem like they do some different things to get him, like in, as a robber or even just in coverage? Yeah, I mean, there's there's different ways that they get him involved, and you know, they'll they'll blitz him some, but he's um, he has the opportunity to come in around the line of scrimmage, down around the line of scrimmage, and then um, fr from a coverage standpoint, um, you know, they can they can pop him down into different places from from the weak side or. You know, use his ability in the deep part of the field. He he can, you know, has a lot of versatility. Khalif Raymond, giving you more out of the return game than you had the first part of the season. Well, I mean, I think Khalif's um, done a good job. I think we've blocked, uh, you know, a little better. Um, so, you know, hopefully, we can continue that when they when they give us opportunities to kick. Um, I would just say that Khalif has taken advantage of the opportunities that he's had uh, in the special teams, you know, on fourth down in the return game, even coverage. Um, it showed up on kickoff coverage, and th thrown whatever he's got into the mix and, and made made some tackles. And so hopefully um, he'll continue to take his you know advantage of his opportunities. You have a conversation with Ryan somewhere after that game, uh, and what's the expectation of the follow up? Well, I have conversations with uh, most all of our players um, every day that I come to work. Uh, the expectations are the same for for everybody that we do our job, uh, that we that we make tackles, you know, block our guy, make field goals, punt the ball well, um, cover kicks. That that's the expectation. You, you've missed as many kicks this year, as many field goal attempts as as any year full year in the franchise history since it's been here. It's obviously an area that, that this team's been able to rely on more than that historically. How much has that put you in a hole? You know, I think there's a lot of things that we have to overcome um, each and every year. Um, this week, you know, I think that there'll be things during the game that we'll have to overcome, um, whether it be a sack, whether it be a missed kick, a missed tackle, um, a touchdown. So I think it's important that we we focus on our ability to overcome things and, and not, you know, dwell on not being able to to do something. Understanding the course of the game, it's not going to go our way. 
uh, and, and hopefully we understand that. Uh, we'd like to eliminate all the potential mistakes and the things that get you beat, but, um, but know that you know, if we can finish um, games and get off to a better start, uh, that'll give us a better chance. How's Ryan kind of responded this week in practice so far? You know, I thought it was good yesterday, you know, and uh, you know, we'll keep, keep working and progressing. I got a lot of confidence in him. He's, you know, Ryan's made a lot of kicks uh, in this league, not only for us, but, but for Kansas City before. And uh, I think we're all confident that, that he'll make them um, going forward. You know, that's, you know, he's a skilled player. He's been accurate. And uh, we anticipate him being accurate this week. When you're a leader in the NFL, what goes into the balance between maybe an approach of, well, let's just see how this works. It'll kind of work itself out and, and keeping guys positive versus maybe saying, okay, it's time to fix things. It's time to kind of kick this into gear. I guess how do you find that balance? Um, are you asking about me personally? Um, you know, I think it, it depends on certain guys. I think it all depends on on who you're trying to, to reach, the, the specific person. Um, what part of their career are they at? Um, how many things have they been, um, have they experienced? What kind of, um, you know, what's their, what's their mental makeup? You know, again, they're, they're all different. Every player that we have here is different. They all have different personalities. Uh, and I think that that's the a challenging thing is to try to find ways to approach them, to, to get them to do their job better, to have them have confidence in, in doing their job, inspire them to do their job better. You know, how we teach them, we teach guys differently. There's guys that, um, learn differently, so uh, it is a um, it's a continual effort to try to figure that out. Is that something you've seen from this team, or is that a matter of more consistency, you know, there as well? Well, I mean, again, I think there's times where we have, you know, we would like to not have to do it, but um, if you have some grit and some resolve, um, when it when it gets tough, to have the ability to to do that. Not that you want to rely on that. That's not the message. The message is, is if it does, for whatever reason, uh, go bad, uh, what we're, going to, we're going to keep playing. We're going to keep fighting. Um, I think that that's we, we do have evidence of that, and, and we have to um, to make sure that we keep that in mind. You mentioned confidence in a list of things you were rattling off there. Do you, do you think this is a confident team? I mean, I, I certainly hope so. I mean, I think that there's, again, there's times when you look at things that we do, um, it looks like it's well run, it looks like it's fast, and it's uh, coordinated and done um, how we coach it and how we um, hope that it would go. Um, you know, and then when things don't go well, hopefully that we can understand that that's going to not have any bearing on what we do moving forward. I think that that's always something that we're always trying to, to improve. Ben, I guess, still in protocol, but obviously a good sign for him being back on the practice field. Yeah, he's doing well. Um, again, you know, there's different times when you have to meet with the independent doctors. Um, you know, so, again, I think he'll work a little bit today and see where we're at. Delaney, chance um, today? Um, you know, maybe he usually does a little bit more on third down, so we'll kind of see where he's at. Um, Kind of wait and see how practice goes. When you look at the collection of offensive minds you have in the building, you know, Pat O'Hara, Todd Down, and Arthur Smith, is there a collaboration that goes into your play design and, and game plan implementation, implementation, or sure. like, how does that how does that uh, develop? Well, guys watch tape, and then they guys are in charge of certain areas, and to to help to report to Arthur, um, we all get together and. You know, come up with with ideas, the things that we have in the playbook. Um, first and second down. How, how do we think that the run game will look? The play passes that we like, the keepers, the screens, the drop back passes, um, empty. You know, all those situations that would come up on first and second down. Uh, we try to look at protection on third down. What we feel like is going to give us the best chance to to help the quarterback, the line, the backs, those guys. You know, protecting. What coverages are their, their favorite coverages on third down? Um, you know, what, what do we have? And, and, and try not to add, obviously, too much. You try to you know, use the stuff that, that the players have ripped um, through the course of the offseason, the training camp. Uh, and then every week there's obviously going to be some 
new scheme plays that, that you may need to practice a, a few more times that you feel like, hey, we could take advantage of, of this situation. Uh, and then you work your way down through uh, short yardage, red zone. Everybody has a responsibility that um, they study, they, they gather information, and then you know come together um, as a group with Arthur and, and discuss and, and try to put a plan together. How much do you chime in with Arthur over the course of a game, and uh, how do you maybe predetermine how much is is allowable from your end and how much is too much? Yeah, I think it's just all a field thing. I'm very conscious of of making sure that you know those things aren't done. You know, mid call if there's something that I think, um, you know, we we'd like to see or we'd want to do that could help us. Try to make suggestions. Um, you know, as that play, that the previous play is happening. Uh, certainly talked on the sidelines about things in between drives about things that um, we had talked about. You know, wanting to run and and wanting to, to to look at and or hey, how did how did we think this looked? Was it was it the play or did did we just miss something? And did we just miss a block, miss a cut? Did we drop the pass? And you know, those are conversations that we have. Is it real as tough a guy on this team as any to replace when, when he's injured like he was last week? And how optimistic are you about his chances this week? I mean, I think the health of our team is always critical. The health of our, our veteran uh, players, um, you know, our, our frontline players. You know, we're just opportunities for other players uh, to step in. You know, they're they're all hard to replace. You know, we don't have that many guys. So when guys go down, um, you know, the net we we've got to get the next guy ready and and go from there. And you know, where Jarrell ends up at the end of this week, we'll we'll kind of see. Um, but but they're all they're all hard to replace. I mean, and and, and certainly Jarrell, uh, he's a great great leader for us. Great veteran player. Very. Um, instinctive player he's a smart player you know i mean it's like he's passed through like the normal d line um you know protocol he could kind of tell you what the linebackers are doing he's pay attention in, in meetings and he focuses and you know i can kind of see him following along if i'm talking to another player in a squad meeting and he kind of understands uh football you know very well will he practice uh, i'm not sure if he'll go on today